but what is the longest book and would it be worth my time to try and read it? I heard a meme once that said English is the language that beats up other languages in the alley and goes through their pockets for loose grammar. So, like, would I want to write <laughs> a novel to try and beat the Guinness World Record? <sighs> yes. <laughs> Hello, my name is Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. Today we will be discussing the longest book in human history. What is that book? Well, it turns out that is actually a much more complicated question to answer and to think about than I originally thought it would be. It turns out this is a rather debated topic. I'm not going to say hotly debated because I don't think anybody who doesn't care about literature even considers this or talks about it. Um, it should seem fairly simple, right? You go to the book, pick up your book, you go to the back of the book, you look at the page count, boom and then you compare it to all the rest of the other books. And there you go, you have the world's longest book. Easy peasy, piece of cake. However, there are a couple flaws when looking at books like this. If we take this book, Fire with Fire by Jenny Han and Sobe and Vivian, uh, we go to the back of the book. This book is 515 pages long. However, if we examine it just a little bit closer, there's a lot of spacing between the words, um, as opposed to Plato here, our good buddy Plato. Uh, this book has, 521 pages and the wording here is a lot closer together. There are a lot more words here. <laughs> um, so technically these books are both about the same length. So, but Fire with Fire looks like it's a lot longer and Plato looks like it's a lot shorter, which just goes to show how much bulk you can add to a book for the page count just by adding spacing between the words and by changing the thickness of the pages. Uh, the thickness on these pages is a lot thicker than the book on Plato because this book is a lot smaller and the pages are a lot thinner. And that is not to mention even the same book, depending on the version it's published in or the publisher, can have a different amount of pages. So for example, we have a mass market version of Aragon, first book, and this book has about 750 pages in it. Uh, the pages are fairly thin. Um, it looks fairly small, <laughs> 550 pages, because this is the hardbound um, version in the back. The pages are a lot thicker, um, but this book looks a lot thicker, um, even though this one technically has 730 pages, 750 pages. And then we also have 646 pages in this version, and this is the version in Spanish. So pages are fairly thin. Um, there's a big margin, there's not as much spacing between the words, and not to mention, books in different languages often have more page numbers. For, exa for example, I know in Spanish, Spanish editions of books often have a higher page count than they do in English because they've been translated. So in order to truly judge by page count, we would have to have the same publisher with the same spacing, the same font size, the same margins, uh, the same language, <laughs> and then we would truly be able to compare by page count. Um, and that's just not happening. So page count, um, while it's a useful gauge, is not the most authentic <laughs> way of judging, if there can be an authentic way to decide um, what book is the longest, because this is a completely arbitrary um, argument that we're having anyway. But let's continue. So the next way that you can uh, determine which book is the longest is by word count. And this is the type of count that Microsoft Word uses when you're looking at like a, a Word document. Hello. Um, but when you, it tells you at the bottom, <laughs> this is the amount of words in the document. Um, this is what it's doing. It's only counting the words in the document. Now, if we're only looking at one language, this is not a bad way to go because the, the word count is going to be the same for this book as it is <laughs> for this book. But the second we start looking at books that have been translated from another language, this kind of falls apart. Because many of the classics that we read, and there are many thought-provoking and wonderful and really fun books translated from other languages, um, that the word count it can be completely off depending on who the translator is. For example, I'm reading Anna Karenina right now, and the edition I'm reading has about 850 pages. But some versions have 600 pages, and some versions have closer to 900 pages. Um, and the word count is going to be completely off, because when the translators are translating it from Russian to English, they're not going to all pick the same word because it's it's a little bit subjective to say like this word means 
this word in Russian means this word in Spanish or this word in English um, because you can say, well, I think this word in Russian translates better to this word in English as opposed to this word. Like it could mean more heart or it could mean more emotion. Like there's, there's a lot of ways of interpreting that novel. And you can't really determine who is right or wrong here because language interpretation and translation is a little bit subjective. And people argue all the time about what is the better translation of a work from one language to another. Um, and everybody, in a sense, is right and wrong um, because it's just subjective. So a book in Spanish might be quite long, and then when translated into English, could become a shorter novel, and the page or the the word count could become shorter. So unless we're willing to just throw out other languages and only pick one language and have everything translated into that one language, and then have specific words mean specific things um, and everybody can agree on that which is never going to happen this is a really hard and sticky subject to to mess with because first of all it's ridiculous to assume that all great thought and works of literature have been translated or not translated have been written in english first and second, <laughs> English in and of itself is a combination of French and Germanic languages, and it's kind of a conglomeration of a lot of words, and it's stolen <laughs> a bunch of other words. I heard a meme once that said, English is the language that beats up other languages in the alley and goes through their pockets for loose grammar. Um, that about describes our language. And, like, and it's... I don't know, like, it's just not an accurate way to judge based on the word count. So the next solution that people have come up with is that we do a character count, meaning we count all of the letters themselves, the spaces, and the punctuation. And now with this, the reason this is helpful is because you can look at Anna Karenina in Russian, count all of the letters, um, count all of the spaces, count all of the punctuation, and then you can take that number, which is a very easy translation from one language to another, and you can compare. So that way we can compare Anna Karenina in the original Russian with, say, the Count of Monte Cristo in its original French. Except the problem with this is this only works with languages where the writing system is based on an alphabet system. If you have a language that's writing system is based on characters and not on letters, this all falls apart. For example, a lot of Asian-based languages such as Korean, Japanese, and Chinese use a character-based um, system to write instead of letters. So one symbol could mean one word or it could be the part of another word. In Chinese, four characters could be one word or they could be four words which is fine if you speak it and kind of a nightmare trying to learn how to read it. Um, and just as a heads up, according to Wikipedia, most Asian-based languages don't do a word count, they do a character count. Because if you speak that language, you know whether that, that character counts as one word or multiple words. And most people agree that character count is the most accurate way to judge a book based on its length. So that's counting all of the punctuation, any words on the page, all of the spacing, and that's generally how we come to the conclusion of what is the longest novel. So according to the Guinness World Record book, the Guinness Book of World Records, I'm not sure what the exact title is, the longest book on record is right here. This is French, and I'm not going to attempt to say this, uh, but the rough translation is In Search of Lost Time or Remembrance of Past Things. It's originally published in France in 13 different volumes, which is insane, and it has a character count of this number right here, which is an insane amount, which roughly translates to about 1.5 million words or about 3,000 to 4,000 pages, depending on what language it's translated into. But that begs the question, if it's published as 13 different books, does it still count as one book? And most people agree that yes. If the author looks at it and says, I think like I meant for all of this to be published in one book and the physical limitations of publishing a book that is 3,000 pages long is very hard, so we're gonna break it up into a bunch of different novels. Um, which is why, for example, Lord of the Rings counts as one long novel as opposed to Harry Potter because J.K. JK Rowling views Harry Potter as seven different novels, whereas J.R.R. Tolkien um, looked at Lord of the Rings as one novel and the publisher said, we have to split it up. Interesting though, uh, Wikipedia counts Proust's novel. Oh, did I say who that novel is by? <laughs> James Proust. Um, they say that James Proust's novel is the eighth longest on their list. And the reason that is, is because Wikipedia says that in order, like, its criteria specifically says it has to be by a big publisher 
and it has to be considered a single work by the author. So according to Wikipedia, the book that is the longest is Venmura Su by J. Jayamohan, and this is Indian, so I totally just butchered the language, and I apologize. Um, and this is a modern retelling of a classic Indian epic tale. Uh, it currently, it started in 2014, and it was just finished July 2020, last year, in the middle of the pandemic. Um, and it was published in 26 different volumes by a publisher who is well known in India. Now, why am I talking about all of this and bringing up, what is the longest book? Because um, I realized in the last couple of weeks that I'm going to die, and that's a little morbid, but it means that I'm not going to be able to read every book out there. Um, and I don't know why I had this naive <laughs> idea that if I just read enough, um, eventually I would be able to read all the books I wanted because I put that limit on like, oh, I, there's a library and I could feasibly read every book in this library. Um, but there are just so many books <laughs> that have been written and published that I physically am not capable of reading every book that's possible because the publishing industry publishes a thousand books every year and that not to mention there's a past history of so many thousands of books I just am not going to be able to read all of them and so there's a part of me that says okay because I can't read all of the books um, I got to be a little bit picky about it and I'm gonna put down books that I'm not enjoying because there are books out there that I will enjoy a lot more um, and so part of the question that I had was, well, what is the longest book? And would it be worth my time to try and read it? Um, and it turns out that was a lot more complicated of a question to answer um, about which book is the longest. Um, but in terms of deciding whether I want to read the book simply because it's the longest and for the thrill of being able to tell people, I have read the longest book on record, um, much more debated <laughs> than I originally thought. And second, you know, I don't think I need to. Um, and the answer might be different for you. Some of these novels, I read the description and I went, that doesn't really sound interesting to me. And that's fine because I don't need to have read the list of the longest 10 books in the world. Um, I don't. <laughs> um, if that doesn't make me happy, then it doesn't make me happy. I don't, I'm not going to force myself to read something that, um, is not going to bring me any thrill or any joy or just to satisfy my ambition. Like that is not something that's going to add to my life. It might add to your life. So feel free to go ahead and do that. I'll link the stuff that I've been looking at in the description down below. That's not to say I'm not curious though. So for example, the, and I can't say this, um, but then Muras, then Mur Asu, um, I did do some digging here and I couldn't find a copy of this translated into English. Um, so if you happen to know what that is, let me know because I would love to read it. Um, but I'm definitely curious and I would pick this up and try it. Um, and if I really loved it, I would continue with it. Um, the only book that I might go out of my way on the list of 20 books I think that Wikipedia had listed is probably Proust, the one that the Guinness Book of World Records Yes, Guinness Book of World Records set is the longest book, and that is purely because it's mentioned five or six times in Gilmore Girls. And first of all, I think we should oppose because I think it's the second or third season when Rory and her mom, when her mom is dating Max, um, like, Lorelai's like, yeah, I'm just gonna read Proust. And Rory's like, it took me like 10 times of checking this out from the library or like four or five months to read this. And I'm like, um, this is the longest, this could possibly be the longest book in history that has been written by human and mankind. And we're just going to toss that name out there like it's no big deal. And if you don't have any knowledge of what's going on here, you're like, oh yeah, like this is equivalent to like Shakespeare. But no, this is like a really big time commitment to read this sucker. Maybe I'll take four or five months and only read Proust. But I don't know, because I don't know if I want to do that. And we'll just have to play that by ear and see how it goes. So, does knowing what the longest book might possibly be change my reading plans? No. But it might change my writing plans because... I don't know. I, that's really ambition talking though. Like, would I want to write <laughs> a novel to try and beat the Guinness World Record? <sighs> yes. <laughs> Should I? Probably not, but I, I, I would like to try my hand at that. Um, anyway, that's all I have for you. Um, I will talk with you all in the comments down below and in another video. Bye, guys.